Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. I sit you down with one of our regular dealers. Now, they're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. I right love hand. that colours. You yeah. love this colour? Oh, so do I. Yes. I love collecting them. Yes. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to advise you to reject it and take a chance and gamble and place the same goods into a local auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money okay, there. Today this show comes to you from Watford in Hertfordshire. There's a great crowd of people here. They brought along their treasures. They are determined to do business. They want to walk away with cash in their hand or gamble and go to auction. But either way, they want the real deal. The first deal of the day is with Henry Nichols. Will he offer a smashing prize for this figurine? What's the history of it? Um, I bought it in today on behalf of my friend. Right. Um, it's been passed down through her family, so it started with her great-grandmother. Yeah. And it's now been passed down to her, and um, she's asked me to come in today. OK. It's something her dad used to display when he was still here. Yeah. Um, but it's not something that would go with what she would basically display today. So, okay. Okay. not her taste. And what do you think she's going to do with the money? Um, probably buy us something nice with it and hopefully take me out. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good result, yeah, wouldn't it, for your, for your trouble? OK, well, what we've got here, we've got typically a continental porcelain um, figurine of a classical maiden feeding an eagle. Mm -hmm. um, I love the colour of it. It's got, you've got this wonderful sort of mottled pink and grey finish to it. The, the actual dress, the base, is all glazed porcelain, but the actual body, the head and the eagle, mm -hmm. they're all unglazed porcelain. And if yeah. you run your fingers on the porcelain, it's biscuity, which is where the phrase bisque porcelain comes oh, okay. from, because it has a bisque texture to it, or a biscuity texture to mm -hmm. it. Now, this is, as I say, continental. You're looking at 1930, I think, first half of the, of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. So, should we get some money out? Absolutely. And have a game. We can. See what we can do. I'm going to start 20. You're looking with, at me very intently. Very steely. It's very <laughs> steely. It's quite unnerving, actually. 40. 60. 80 pounds. That's my opening gambit. How does that seem? I think we need a few more notes on the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's not enough. Not enough. Not Are enough. we a million miles away? Maybe not a million miles away, but we're not there yet. Oh, you're being very, very cagey with me. Oh, I yeah. am. OK. Right. How much do I like it? That's the question. £100. £110. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Getting a pink one out. <laughs> 115 I think she's still worth a little bit more than that. OK. I think if we could perhaps get to 130, um, mm. we could have a deal. I'll put another 10 on the table, 125, but that's as much as I want to get. OK, I think we've got a deal. Fantastic. Thanks ever so much for bringing it in. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Pleasure. <laughs> Will it be checkmate for Jam Keen with this next lot? And would you like to tell me a little bit of background about this item of furniture that you brought me in today? OK. Uh, this is passed down to me by my uncle. Um, in clearing out his place, I came across this. So I have seen it for many years, just sat away collecting dust. Because the more dust that it collects, the more valuable it is. Oh, is that what you've been told? Right. Well aged. And you don't want to keep this to play chess on or drafts or? No, I'm not really a chess player. No? You're not tempted? Not tempted, but you it's... You don't think use it as a little table? No, no, it's, it's got a, a slight wobble. Mm. So, um... It has, that's what happens as you get older. Well, this is probably a late 19th century papier-mâché table, inlaid with mother of pearl and all this gold leaf and very intricately done, very, very nicely painted. You've got mother of pearl all down the legs. Obviously, the joints need a little attention. But what concerns me more than that is that it originally started life as probably a quartet of tables. So they would have slid in here. There's up underneath here. There is 
a groove on both sides and each table which would have been graduated would have slid into these sides so obviously it's nice quality things can be done to it the joints can be stuck but for me it's just an incomplete one-off but you just want me to put some redders down and we'll see how we go yes i know chess is a popular game popular item so it I'm is sure it'll be suitable for some right and i'm going to put down 20 40 and that's 50 pounds um, on the table. It's taken many years to get the amount of dust on the lower joints. I know. So uh, I know. I'm expecting a little more than 50. Not in the habit of paying for dust. I can get that free at home. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take away the 10 and I'll put down another 20, 60. The ball is in your court. Um, and you're not going to go any higher. I don't think I will, no. If not, I'll take it to auction. Fair enough. All the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Let's hope the buyers in the sale room agree with David's dust theory and bid big as it goes under the gavel of auctioneer Tom Key. You think it's worth a bit more? Tiny bit. Well, I think so too. I think it's worth a little bit more. 100 to 150 pounds is the estimation the auctioneer put on it. It has a reserve of 60, which I think is reasonable. It's coming up now. Is it going to sell? I think it is. Let's see what happens. Not 135 now, 19th century. Japan, that paper match, a chess table. 30 pounds, round bit of 30 pounds, give me 32, 32, 35, 35, 38, 40, 42, 45, 48, 50, 60, 5, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. They like it. 120, 130, 140, 150. At 140, I've at 140, you want 150, you say no. At 140, I have 140, well, I haven't got a 140, you've got it at 140. 140 under the gavel in the room, a lot of interest. Take away the commission, and it's just under £120. Are you satisfied, David? I'm very happy, yes. Any idea what you might do with the money, the 120 quid? Um, possibly buy another antique. Not a bad idea. On the day, that was the real deal. Time's ticking, and it's back to the dealer's den with Alison Chapman. Nice to meet you, Frank. And this is obviously not your watch. No, it's the West. Uh, I bought it for an anniversary, but... Um... She uh, wants one with less maintenance now, uh, you know, so the winding up, she's always forgetting to wind it up and uh, wants something a little bit more modern now, so... Well, all of that is good news. You're obviously a very thoughtful husband. Huh? Tick. <laughs> you brought a quality piece for your wife. Tick. Lovely. However, the downside is these watches are not fashionable. That's what she said, yeah. This would be sort of very much sort of late 70s, 80s. It yeah, probably is. Yeah. It's about yeah. that bad era, yeah. I've got some, there's a little bit of paperwork that goes with it, so I don't know if you want have a look at that. So we've got a valuation certificate. Yeah. Nine carat gold ladies' longines, and they value it at £875. Yeah, insurance purposes, obviously. Yeah, what did you pay for it? I paid uh, 4 20 for it. Why not? Well, I mean, there's no doubt about it. If you wanted to go and buy uh, a gold longines today, you'd be paying mega money. I mean, they're still a very respectable maker. Mm -hmm. But this really, at the end of the day, will be sold for its weight. Yeah, I'd, uh, well, I'd, I'd, I realise that. OK, well, I'll go straight for it. I shan't muck you about. So we've got 100. He's smiling. <laughs> 200. 220 pounds, Frank. I need a little bit more than that, and it'll be, I'll be happy. There isn't any more than that. Oh, I'll really need to take more than that. That's why my missus is string me up, otherwise. Right, well, let me tell you what the independent valuers and the auctioneer thinks and what I think, Frank. Independent valuers are slightly at odds. They say 200 to 250. They also say 250 to 350. Where am I going to be? Well, I, th I think there probably is something like a couple of hundred pounds plus there. You've got 220 on the table. Now, there may well be a private person at the auction that says, 
I like that. I'll give it to my daughter, I'll give it to my wife as a present, but I don't think a dealer will give a lot more. So, your call. It is hard. So you don't think you could put another £10 on it? No. <laughs> OK, then all I'll, I'll think I'll take it then, yeah? You sure? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. OK, Frank, we've got a deal. All right, thank you. Thank you, darling. Cheers. Coming up, Susan is desperate to get rid of her figurines. Why are you disposing of them? Because they're not really my thing. No, they're not mine either. Oh, oh dear, <laughs> that's not good news. <laughs> so is Ian the man for the job? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. The team are in Watford and Hertfordshire today, and Ian Towning has a porcelain trio on his table. Bisc. Yes. Late 19th century. Mm -hmm. And how did you get hold of them? Well, I inherited them from my father, mm -hmm. who inherited them from my grandmother, mm -hmm. and my grandmother inherited them from somebody else. And I'm not quite sure who that was. <laughs> <laughs> So they've been in the family for a while? They have. OK. And why are you disposing of them? Because they're not really my thing. No, they're not mine either. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> That's not good news. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I used to buy them about 25, 30 years ago. They were very, very popular. The Spanish market, the Italian market, they absolutely loved them. They used to, you could buy as many as you wanted and you would sell them. Now it seems to be just a dead market. For this type of thing. They used to fetch like uh, a piece like that, we would sell for about 350. Mm -hmm. Now you wouldn't be able to sell it for that anywhere near it. So But you have a good idea what you're after. Yes. You do? I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a difficult one. <laughs> um, to tell you honestly, I wouldn't want to pay more than 50. 100 and 25. You never see me very often putting fives on a table, but there you go. I wouldn't want to be more than 125. Mm, you can't put a little bit more on there, can you? Not really, because they're tough to sell. Put one more of those fives if you don't seem to use them very often. <laughs> that I don't use very yeah, often. Yeah, exactly. I can use them for you. <laughs> like <that>. <laughs> <laughs> um, 130. And we have it here. Oh yeah. my god. Do I? Yes. <laughs> 130. I hope I serve them. Otherwise, I'll come and sell them back you to will. you. will. There's going to be someone who likes them. I hope so, <laughs> yeah, for <indeed>. my sake. <laughs> That's fine. So 130, we've got to do. Yes. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Susan's relieved to see the back of those figurines. But will Ian be able to sell them on? Find out later. Hello, now Henry. over to Henry for a spot of tea. Nice to see you. Well, what have we got here? This looks quite interesting. Um, what do you know about it? Um, I don't really know a lot. It's just it was um, given to me my, by my great grandmother. Right. Um, ever since then, we've sort of kept it safely um, wrapped up in the loft, and you know, wondered if it would be valuable at all. So. Is the fact it's been wrapped up in the loft for many years? Is that why you kind of decided to get rid of it? Or? Yes, it is really. Yes, it's okay. taking up space. So. What we've got here is this is basically what we call a cottage tea set. Okay. This one's a little bit different. We've got the hot water jug, we've got the sugar bowl. This piece here is actually a jam pot. Okay. okay. Then we've got the teapot and we've got the cream jug. So this would have been really ostensibly for a cream tea, which would be fantastic. Oh. So let's have a look at who it's made by. Okay, we've got John Maddock and Sons. Um, are the makers here, which we can tell on the on the bottom there, and it's basically what they call rustic pattern. Okay. Um, it's going to date to, I would say, late twenties, early thirties. Okay. okay. It's a nice collection. Here. It's a very nice collection. Okay, let's see where we can go. I'm going to offer you twenty, forty. 
and the brown one, 50 pounds. Mm, doesn't seem quite you look, enough for me. <laughs> you look disappointed. I am a bit disappointed, yes. Okay, I'm going to make you one final offer and I'm going to call it 55 pounds. And I think any more than that, and I think it should go to auction. What do you think? Um, no, I think I'd like to go to auction. You sure? Yes. I yes. can't price it out of you for £55? I'm sorry, no. No. Well, OK. Well, you'll have a great day at auction. I wish you all you. the very best. Thanks, Thanks for very popping much. in. Thank, Thank you. you. Sue so stuck to her guns there, but will she get what she's looking for in the sale room? Why are you selling this item? Because family, nostalgia. Uh, yes, I know. Never use it? No, we didn't. And it was in the loft all the time and wrapped up. And, uh, I think this is often the way. Want to use it. You know, something like a tea service, people don't use it today. They use the mugs, they put a tea bag in or put coffee in it. And exactly. sadly, you don't use it. But it's a rather nice little item. It's here in the sale room. It has a reserve of £60 on it. Let's see if great grandmother's uh, five piece cottage. A tea set is going to sell. It's coming up now. Fifty pounds for it. Forty pounds for it. Forty pounds. A bit of forty pounds. At forty pounds. A bit of forty pounds. Be forty-two. A bit of only a bit of forty pounds. Be forty-two. Forty-two. Forty-five. Forty-five. Forty-eight. Fifty. Five. Sixty. Five. Seventy. Five. Seventy-five. Eighty. Seventy-five. Give me eighty. Eighty there. Eighty-five. We're at eighty pounds Five. now. It's doing Five. well. Give me ninety-five. You say done at ninety pounds. I'm going for ninety pounds. You're a bit, madam. Ninety pounds have gone. So £90, a little bit of a surprise. They usually struggle, these small tea services, but I think that's pretty good. So £90, we've got some commission to take away. It's just under £77. Okay. What's your first reaction? I'm very pleased with that, actually. Please? Yes. Okay. Yes, On the please. day, £77, that was the real deal. Hello, my name Back in the dealer's den, and Alison's surrounded by a family's entire history. So, you have these scrolls, which are rather interesting. How did you come by them? Uh, I got them at the auction, local auctions, possibly about 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. And have you had them on display? No, it's a I've shame. I've had a look at them. I mean, this is a, a family tree that's been mm. created by the College of Arms. Mm -hmm. So, someone along the line, and it looks, the date looks to be around about the um, early 1800s has come good yeah. and wants to trace their ancestry and their pedigree. Yeah. Um, the women are hardly noted. They're virtually untraceable. Over and over again, one can see that the women are just daughter of. They don't have a name. Mm -hmm. um, and even in some cases, they're completely missed. So then we have this one, which again is a scroll, but actually you can pull that back. It's so beautifully decorated. This one's earlier, and this is yes. 1750. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a, a title document. George II. Yes. yes, for George II. And it's so beautifully decorated. I just think it's lovely. And then this box, which is a lovely box. Um, this is Edward VII. Let me open this piece up. And this again is the passing or the agreement by Edward VII to the passing of title. And um, again, beautifully decorated, lovely colors. It's a beautiful thing. I shall try to buy them. We'll see if we can do business together. Mm -hmm. 50. No. 100. Keep going. 150. No. 200. No. 220. Still not enough. It's worth more. N not, not to me in the condition that they're in. Only you know if you want to take that money or take the gamble of auction. What do you want to do? Um, we have a deal. You've got a deal? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Coming up, who's afraid of the big bad doll? Uh, I've only got one son. Right. And he 
detests it. Well, I'm a bit older than him and I still find he's quite scary. Yes. Will Henry overcome his fear and make an offer? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Watford in Hertfordshire. Hi, Andy. This next lot should be right up Ian Street, a bit of bling. Very interesting. Silver, Indian, filigree. Could you enlighten us as to where you got it from? I got it from a charity shop, actually. You bought it in a charity yes. shop? Yes. What attracted you to it? Well, actually, it attracted me the, the, this one here, all the stones, and also the, the beautiful work is around the stones. Yeah, it is lovely, lovely work. The, this work comes from the north part of India. Okay. And uh, the stone is called the Star of India. Mm -hmm. It's a stone that is also used on the dome of a temple in India. All right. Yeah, very interesting. interesting. Yeah. And uh, it's very easy to wear, you know, because it doesn't restrict you to a color. It's almost like a cat's eye in yeah. the stone. It's very, very, very clever. Uh, and it's, it has got an Indian mark, you know, it's yeah. just marked silver. It's very common in India, we would mark things yeah. in that manner silver or 22 yeah. carat, 22. you know, just put yeah. two, two, and yeah. that's and it. That's it. You know, I, I like it. It's very lovely. And why are you selling it? My nephew's getting married. Your nephew's getting married? Yes, uh -huh. and he's already told me that he wants money. All right. Well, I don't generally buy silver, but because it's a tractor, uh, I'm going to make an offer. I might get it, I might not. Let's um, see what happens. I would happens. love you to get it, but, okay. you know. 50. Mm -hmm. I love hand. that colours. You yes. love this colour? Oh, so look. do I. Yes. <laughs> I love collecting them. Yes. Uh, 150, 200. Now, to me, that's what is worth. 200. But I think you can squeeze a bit more. I'm you sure want you to squeeze would... me for more? Oh, I'm, sure, I'm sure you're used to just squeeze. <laughs> Those are the words I like to hear from Ian. You want more? We always want more, Ian. Okay. Is that it? That is Will it. you sweeten the pot more? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's a very fair price at, at, uh, at 200. Right, well, on this occasion, where I normally say, Ian, get your money in, I'm going to say, if it was me, I probably would take the 200 quid. But if you want to gamble, you can go to the auction. But be prepared, if it doesn't come up trumps, then that's part of the gamble. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, you've heard what David said. The choice has to be yours, whether you want to gamble it, take it to auction, see whether it's going to make a lot more. Yeah. It possibly could. Possibly could. I think it's a fair price. You think it's I'm a fair sure price? I'm sure it will sell for more than that, but that's <laughs> fine, fair enough. We all have to leave, so yeah. it's fine. So you're so, accepting my 200? Yes, yeah, we have a deal. We have a deal. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very yeah. much for bringing Thank it back. Can Ian make a profit from the necklace and bracelet, or are they going straight into his personal collection? Find out later. I'm Laurie. Laurie Over to Henry. Will oh. he be a doll and stump up the cash for this next lot? What's the history of it? Uh, it belonged to my mother. Right. Um, it was one of a pair uh, okay. that my cousin has got the other one to. Why are you looking to get rid of it? Have you got no um, grandchildren to pass it down to? My, no, we, uh, I've only got one son. Right. And he detests it. <laughs> Literally, he hates it. Right, OK. How old's your son? Uh, 36. 36, OK. So, you know. Well, I'm a bit older than him, and I still find it quite scary. Actually. Yes. Well, let's take a look at it. Um, OK. What we have here, we have a porcelain-headed doll. You're looking at the sort of late 19th, early 20th century here. So what we need to do is establish exactly where she's from. So to do that, we need to turn her over and have a look. And Germic, we can see, modesty as well. indeed, <laughs> she is German, and she's a handwerk of Germany. Okay, so that does date her to latter part of the 19th century, early part of the 20th century. Um, the head's in very good condition as well. There's no damage to it. We do have damage to the composite here. We've got a lot of cracking, a lot of crazing. Um, there's a finger gone just on the other right. side there. I noticed. Yeah. Um, so, in actual fact, that does affect the value. Okay, 20, 40, 60 pounds. How does 60 pounds seem to you? I think it's a bit low, actually. Okay, I'm going to go 
70, 75. Had a 75 pound seat. Still a bit less than I was hoping for. A little bit less, okay. I'm gonna put another 10 down, and that I think is gonna be my lot, 85 pounds. Would you go another 10? I wouldn't. You wouldn't. Do you think you're going to go to auction? I think I will go to auction, yes. Fantastic. Well, I wish all you right. all the best. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Let's hope the folk in the auction room don't find the doll as scary as Laurie's son does. You sat down with our dealer, Henry. He offered you 85 quid. You turned that down. Yep. You're gambling. You're here in the auction. It's coming up now. 100 pounds for it. 50 pounds for it. Give me a bit of 50 pounds start, 50 pounds for it, a bit of 50 pounds, 55, 5, do you want 60, 5, 70, 5, 80, 75, give me 80 for it, 75, give me 80 for it, 75 pounds, 80, 80, 85, 85, 90, 90, 95, 100, a bit here for 95, give me 100 for it, 95 pounds, a bit of 95, I'm going to sell it at 95 pounds, at 95 pounds, you'll be at 95, 95 pounds. It's gone under the gavel at £95. Take away the commission, you're going home with 81 quid. Now, I know it's not a lot of money. You've had it a long time. Any idea what you'll do with the £81? Uh, probably take the family out for dinner. OK. Family's going out uh, for a dinner or for a lunch. Not a lot of money, but at least it's sold and it has made a price. That is the real deal. Hello, Jenny. Hello. We're back in the dealer's den where excitement is in the air as a famous name arrives on Jan's table. David and auctioneer Tom Keane are buzzing with anticipation nearby. Well, I must admit, my eyes lit up when I saw this wonderful piece of Moorcroft pottery. It's in the most fabulous design called Big Poppy. Would you like to tell me why you have it? Um, well, I met my husband about 29 years ago and I went up to visit his mother who lived in Derbyshire and after a few meetings I happened to see this on her shelf and I just liked the look of it and I happened to say how nice it was and she gave it to me as a present. How wonderful. You must have been bowled over when she gave it to you. Yes, but I didn't realise it was a Moorcroft. I know didn't know that until just a few years ago. Yes. Words spring to mind. Wow. Spectacular. It's fab. Oh, that's nice. And we have this wonderful ginger jar with this lid with one whole poppy on the top. And then if we turn it over, we can see underneath the jar, it's quite clearly marked with William Moorcroft in blue, W. Moorcroft, and impressed as well with Made in England. And as I say, about 1925, thereabouts. And I think it's just rather special that it hasn't got a nick on it. It's in really very good order. Now, when this first arrived through the door, I looked across at Tom and some of our independent values, and they were rolling their eyes, and I thought, what a Bobby Dazzler. What do you think, first of all, about the pot? You've had a good look at it. Very good colours, a lovely size. I'm concerned it might be Walter Moorcroft rather than William, and uh, the marks bearing, bearing underneath are in blue. So I'm being very cautious, sort of eight to twelve hundred pounds worth. The signatures, uh, they do look like Walter. Another member of our team is saying, no way in the world, that's William. You know, that's 1920s. I love it a bit. I think it's marvellous. So there have been some split opinions, really. Yeah. Now, you set your estimation at 8 to 12. The independent values have set their value at 1,500 to 2,000. But quite frankly, you know, none of us really know. We all know that Moorcroft is highly desirable. We know if the right collectors and dealers lock horns together, oh, they, on the same day, off. you can get some amazing results, can't you, Tom? I have done, yes. OK. Well, first of all, let's do the starters. Let's do the openers. Let's see what our dealer puts on the table. Maybe she's a buyer. Let's find out. 
coming up, Jan goes all out to buy the more crop bars. The question is, is that your best offer or are you prepared to fill it up a little bit more? Prepare to fill it up a little I'm going to move out of the way and see what our dealer puts onto the table. But will she get to take it home? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Watford in Hertfordshire. Earlier we saw David and auctioneer Tom Keane get very excited about a Moorcroft vase. Now it's time to talk money. Quite a bit of money. OK then, Jenny. I'm going to try my best to buy it. I can tell you my heart is going bum ba dee bum Not from nervousness, but because I'm really excited about this. Really oh, excited. Very good. So, right, do your best. <laughs> so, I Close. will. 50. 100. 150. 200. 250. 300. 350. 400, 450, 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 750, 800, 850, 900. That is 950. 1,000, that's 1,100, that's 1,200, that's 1,300, that's 1,400, and that's 1,500. 1,500 pounds. Straight up to £1,500. That's at the lower end of our independence values. Mm. What do you think? I'm starting to feel more and more disappointed. It's not going to come to my auction room. The money's <laughs> going up and it's slipping away from me, so uh, I don't know. I still think there is some room with this pot. It's a great-looking thing. I'm going to tell our seller I believe it could be worth more in auction. Right, Jenny, so there's £1,500 on the table. <clears throat> well, I'm going to say, first of all, there's a split decision here, whether this is William Moorcroft or it's his son, Walter. One of our estimations is 15 to 2, and that is from the independent valuers. Auctioneer has perhaps been a little bit cautious because I can tell you the auctioneer is leaning on the side of this being Walter, being right. the son of William. Mm -hmm. And that being the case, the feeling is it may not be quite as valuable mm -hmm. as if it was William. Well, as I've said to Jenny David, I'm very keen on the piece. I'm not really bothered if it's by William or Walter because I think it's spectacular. OK. And I don't think you see them very often. When will uh, you see another? Well, I haven't. And I'm going to say I think you're absolutely right. The question is, is that your best offer or are you prepared to fill it up a little bit more? Prepare to fill it up a little I'm bit I'm going to move out of the way and see what our dealer puts onto the table and then come back and give you the best of my opinion, which I've collated from all our independent valuers. Thank you very much. Thank you. So to tempt you, Jenny, we're at 1,500. I'm going to say 1,600. 1,650. Is that tempting you? Am I getting a little closer? Can we try for a little bit more? I was going to say a little bit more, will mm -hmm. that do it? 1700, 1750, 1800 pounds. It's a very good offer. What, what, what's your gut feeling? <sighs> I'm overwhelmed actually. Um, I know, it's a very difficult decision. I'm taking instruction from my independent value as an auctioneer. Now, they cannot be 100% sure. But they're looking at this, and there was some doubt whether it was William or Walter. They're all now coming together and saying, oh, by gum, lad, we look at the colour of that, and it's William. And I think if it is William Moorcroft, and it is that size, and it is that, I don't want to disappoint our dealer, but I'm going to say this. The general feeling is this could run in the two to £3,000 range. So, there isn't a guarantee, but there is a reasonable chance that it will go within that area. Are you at the end of your tether 
We've no. come back to you three or four times. You have? OK. And she's saying to you, I still rate this, maybe they are right, maybe it is a two to three thousand pound vase, and maybe I should get stuck in rather than lose it. OK. Right, Jenny, well, look, I'm willing to take a gamble, and I'm going to say... 1900, 1950, 2,000 pounds, 2,100, a nice round sum of 2,200. What do you think of that? Very nice. <laughs> um, it's a lot of money. I think we're getting there. Very We're getting close. there like British Rail. Yes. 2,300. 2,350. Can we put one more note there and, and I'll make a deal? And then we shake hands. We shake hands. 2,400 on the table. Right, I think you have a deal. I think I'm... We shake well, hands. Matt, we At shake. last. <laughs> OK, you're welcome. Well, I have to say Thank about you very much. She Thank Who you. Dares wins. Thank and you. I won that, and I'm quite thrilled with it. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, they've shaken hands. <laughs> now the auctioneer is saying to himself, damn, I've missed it. I've missed a cracking pot That's going right. into yeah. my auction. What a cracking lot. Good Shouldn't thing. say cracking. What a bobby tassel. That's what I should say. Jam wasn't going to let that ginger jar out of her sight. Great deal. Jenny cashed in there, but have our dealers. They've shelled out nearly £3,300 on their purchases, okay. but it seems One. they've had a run of bad luck when it comes to selling them on. This is going to be a difficult one. Wow. <laughs> Sue was desperate to get rid of the three bisque figures, and it appears Ian's prediction was right, as he still has hold of them. It's very easy to wear, you know, because it doesn't restrict you to a colour. Ian is yet to sell on the necklace and bracelet. He'll be wearing them himself soon if they hang around in his shop much longer. <laughs> So beautifully decorated. I just think it's lovely. Alison is carrying out further work and is in the process of tracking down an Irish family linked to the scrolls. She's hoping that this research will eventually maximise her profit. This really, at the end of the day, will be sold for its weight. Alison held on to the watch, waited for gold to hit a high, then scrapped it, earning a £60 profit. And if yeah. you run your fingers on the porcelain, it's biscuity which is where the phrase bisque porcelain comes oh, okay. from, because it has a bisque texture to it, or a biscuity texture to it. Mm -hmm. Henry tracked down another figurine, bringing his total expenditure to £220. He then sold them off as a pair, netting 20. I can tell you my heart is going bum ba dee bum Not from nervousness, but because I'm really excited about this. The Moorcroft ginger jar that stole Jan's heart is still with her. She's planning to showcase it at an international fine art and antiques fair later in the year. Very nice. <laughs> um, it's a lot of money. I think we're getting there, aren't we're, we? Um, yes. But Jenny is our real winner of the day after pocketing a cool £2,400. Now that's how you do business. Yeah.